there are two main ways to reach the estate. You could travel by boat, although given how dangerous the seas around there are, I wouldn't recommend it. Which is why most of our recruits arrive from Stagecoach, which travels through the old road. The old road suffers from its fair share of dangers as well. Brigands have control of the road, robbing and killing travelers. But while the brigands have control of the road, and something of a base camp in the woods, they don't have complete control of the wields. That is the domain of another faction. One that worships the fungus that has twisted and poisoned nature itself. The wields weren't always corrupted beyond recognition. Back when the ancestor was still alive, the woods around the estate were a dangerous and wild area, but still pale in comparison to the current situation. It was all thanks to one woman that the corruption began. She was a beautiful woman who made repeat house calls to the ancestor. But the young woman was more than just a pretty face, as she boasted an immense knowledge on ancient herbal medicine. The ancestor was impressed by her skills, and together they formed a partnership, planting, harvesting, and brewing. But as time wore on, the young woman began self-experimenting consuming strange fungi and herbs, all in an attempt to gain insight into the thing underneath the manor. Her concoctions changed her, physically and mentally. When the ancestor saw her again, he could no longer tolerate her change and banished her to live in the wheels. Why she was free to live is still unclear. Perhaps the ancestor had a soft spot in his heart for the young woman. Or maybe, the confrontation would not have ended so favorably, so he let her free. But it was this act of mercy, or fear, that would further her own corruption. In the wheels, her wildness would be welcomed. She was free to continue her self-experimentation without restraint, and soon acquired a new title, the Hag of the Wheels. Her coven would form soon after, and the wields went from a wild and dangerous place to a realm of poison and death. They would spread their corrupted fungus throughout the wields, affecting every plant, creature, and person lost in the woods. Let's talk about the coven itself. Their leader is the hag, who almost acts as an avatar for the fungi. Twisted by her experiments and life in the wilderness, she has gone so far as to begin consuming human flesh. In battle, she will entrap one of our heroes in her cauldron to be cooked alive, occasionally tasting her stew to the screams of those victims trapped within. Below the hag are two important groups, the hateful Viragos and the Crones. We'll look at the Viragos to start. The hateful Viragos are also called the Daughters of the Hag, or the Wicked Servants of the Hidden Moon. They have been reborn from the Hag's cauldron, and now possess the power of the fungi. They act in maintaining and extending the corruption of the wheels, shifting and moving in the shadows, summoning the necrotic fungus, or casting a ruinous hex. The next group are the Crones, whose skills focus on herbology, mixing and burning herbs to debuff and infect our heroes. Perhaps they join the coven to learn from the hag, or in the hopes of being reborn in her cauldron. Though we don't know for sure, so we can only speculate. Below these two groups are the various fungal monsters who form a majority of the hag's faction. The oddest creature is the unclean giant. Perhaps the giants lived in the wheels and the hag's coven infected them with the fungi. Or maybe they're normal humans who had become infected and had the fungi grow within them, making them into giants. But I will say, they hit hard. Wielding a tree trunk like a mace 
and hitting their opponent like a ton of bricks. Travelers who get lost and don't get consumed by the hag turn into the fungal scratchers, whose claws secrete a poison that burns the flesh of their victims. But not even those who have died are allowed to rest. They come back as the fungal artillery, with the fungus twisting their corpse, letting the poison and disease spread more freely. So what does this coven worship exactly? And what do they even want? While their members aren't the most talkative bunch, we can theorize. We know they worship the fungus, which bears a methodical spread, with some references to the hidden moon. Maybe there's a connection there, but it's still not clear. As for what they want, we can hazard a fair guess. To spread the corruption throughout the lands, twisting the very nature itself into a malformed and malicious creature to consume all who wander into their domain. Figuratively, and in some cases, very literally. But as long as there are those willing to fight, and those brave or foolhardy enough to travel into the woods, the corruption can be contained, burned back by our heroes. Corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil 